Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're going to do a quick calculation of a neural network. We're just going to dive into the forward propagation step in this video. Um, in the next video, we'll do the back propagation, which is how the weights are estimated. Um, but let's just dive on in. I'm going to do kind of two parts here. The first part is going to be um, me just talking about the basic calculation, so you get like a general idea. And then we're going to do it in Excel, so you can see how you would actually calculate this. Um, with real numbers in a real world example. So let's dive on in. Okay, so from this example here, you can see that we're gonna have three inputs, X1, X2, and X3. Um, we're gonna end up having two uh, neurons in our hidden layer here. So we're gonna have layer one, neuron one, which is going to be activated. And then we're gonna have uh, layer one, neuron two, which is going to be activated. And then finally, we're gonna calculate out um, y hat, which is going to be our final prediction here. So in this example today, we're gonna to do the activation function for the hidden layer is going to be logistic. So um, as I'm gonna note here, activation function. Um, so far, our hidden layer is going to be equal to logistic. And if you don't remember, um, logistic is just going to be one over one plus e to the negative x, um, where x is going to be your linear equation. And then you also have to have an output function or an output activation function. And the output activation function we're going to use today is going to be called linear. And all this means realistically is that um, the combination of the neurons, we're just not going to use an activation function. Um, so this basically just means your output y hat is going to be equal to um, y hat. I know mathematically this isn't correct to say y hat equals y hat, but you'll see when we get going in the example how this works. Okay, so when you look at this chart here, um, we're going to have x1, x2, and x3, which are input variables. And we want to calculate out um, L1, N1, so this first neuron in the hidden layer. To do this, what you're going to do is you're going to randomize your weights and your biases. And if you remember here, um, if you're a statistician, weights, we can just consider these as coefficients. Um, and then we're also going to randomize what we call a biases for the bias. Uh, this is the same thing in statistics as an intercept term. So what we're gonna do here is that L1, N1, so this equation is just going to be weight one times x1, where x1 is our input and weight one is going to be our first weight, um, plus weight two, x2, plus um, weight three, x3, and then plus our biases here, which we'll just call bh of one. Uh, this is going to be the first calculation for the first neuron. And then the second one here was almost the exact same. So layer one, neuron two is going to be new weights. So we'll just call this one weight four of X1. So our X's are going to be the same inputs here, uh, plus weight five of X2, plus weight six of X3, um, and then plus our second biases here. So this is going to give us the base calculations for layer one, neuron one, layer two, two, neuron two. Um, we'll call this step one. And then step two is we actually need to activate these functions. So realistically, this is layer one, neuron one for your X's. And this is going to be layer one, neuron two for your X's. And what we're really going to do is take layer one, neuron one is now going to be equal to um, the calculation we did up here, this L1, N1 of X. And that's going to get plugged in just to your activation function. So here we're doing logistic. You could do, you know, tan H, you could do soft max, you could do anything you wanted as an activation function here. Um, but there's just going to be one over one plus E to the negative L one in one of X. So what this is going to be equal to is the actual true L one in one is going to be equal to one over and then it's going to be uh, one plus e to the negative, and then weight one, x one plus weight two, x two plus weight three, x three, um, 
plus your biases one. And that's going to be your L1, N1, like the final, final value here. And then if we scroll up here and do our calculation for layer one, neuron two, this is going to be equal to the same thing. So it's really going to be one over um, one plus E to the negative. And then it's going to be your weight four X one plus weight five X two plus weight six X three plus your biases of two. And that's going to activate um, your layer one neuron one and layer one neuron two. The final step here is going to be calculating out your Y hat. So again, you do the exact same process. If you had multiple hidden layers, you'd continue on doing this step. So now to calculate the output layer here, we wanna calculate, we're gonna call this Y hat. And Y hat is realistically going to be equal to, again, new weights here. So we'll call this weight seven um, times layer one neuron one plus uh, weight eight of layer one neuron two. And then we're gonna add that to our biases of three. And this would give you your Y hat. Since we're doing linear activation function at the output, um, we just take this as the final example. So realistically, it's just Y hat is equal to Y hat. So this is the final. If you wanted to do something different, so for example, if you wanted to continue doing logistic, so logistic um, was going to be your final activation function on the output layer here. Um, this would just be simply your Y hat. So the actual final one would just be what we did before. So one over uh, one plus E to the negative, and then it would be uh, weight seven times L1 and one plus uh, weight eight times L1 and two, and then plus your biases at three. So that's it. Super simple math, guys. This is nothing exciting. Uh, forward propagation is going to be the final output here, but let's look at Excel and see how this is actually done. So to give you a little fuller explanation of this here, if you look at our Excel, Y here are going to what we're predicting. So in our case, right, each one of these rows, rows two, three, and four, uh, these are just three observations. In the real world, if you had like a hundred or a million observations, you'd have like a hundred or a million rows. Uh, again, you'd only have one column for Y. That's what you're outputting. That's what we're trying to predict here. Um, and then X1, 2, and 3, this just means we have three input variables. You could have 20 input variables. You could have 100 input variables. You could have a million input variables, right? It doesn't really matter. Um, but think about this logically, like just one row is what's going through this process once. And then this happens multiple times. So it goes through each observation has to run through the calculation. Um, we're going to use matrix multiplication though, so it simplifies this. And we're not doing the same calculation, you know, hundreds of thousands of times. Uh, if you have large data sets. So these are going to be our input variables. This is going to be what we're predicting. Again, if you will see these little numbers here, like three by one, three by three, three by two, um, these just help keep track of the matrix sizes when I'm doing the matrix multiplication to make sure it's done correctly. Um, and then as we said, WH, these are our weights. So we're going to randomize our weights and then we're going to randomize our biases. We're going to randomize our weights at output and our biases at output. Um, you have to randomize, you have to do this multiple times. Um, if you want more details, look at other videos I've done. I've talked a little bit more about the theoretical side of why you would do this. Uh, but let's dive on in here. So calculating out um, the hidden layer inputs before the activation function like we did, which was just like the weights times the X's. Um, you can see here in this equation, what we're gonna do is take uh, our X1, X2, X3, which is gonna be B2 to B4 and we're gonna multiply that by our weights. So this is the same as saying, you know, weight one times X1 plus weight two times X2 plus weight three times X3. And then also for the second neuron here, which is gonna be the second column, right? Uh, it'd be the same concept, be uh, weight four times X1, eight, weight five times X2, weight six times X3. So it should be three weights for each uh, hidden neuron here in our example. The first column here, so column F on Excel, this is going to be the weights for the first hidden neuron, so L1, N1, and then G is going to be the hidden weights here um, for L1, N2. But you multiply these together and then you just add the biases. So again, each equation biases one in our example that we were looking at is going to be 1.03. 
Uh, biases two is going to be 1.91. So same calculation, just using matrix multiplication. Um, and you're gonna end up with this table here that we're looking at, this little one. Um, these are going to be the values for each one of the calculations. So since we have three observations here, right? So we have three rows, um, we're gonna have three calculations for neuron one, and we're gonna have three calculations for neuron two. Um, next, we need to activate these, right? We're going to use logistic. So it's one over one plus e to the negative x. Um, if you look at these cells, this is not matrix multiplication. It's one over one plus e to the negative, and then here's a nine. So that's gonna be our first one. And then we're gonna do the exact same calculation here for all of them, um, for our first neurons and our second neurons. So we're just activating all of these. And then finally, we need to go to our output layer. So if you look at our output layer, it's the exact same thing here. We're just taking um, the hidden layer that's been activated. So that final L1, N1, and the final L2, N2. These are going to be our columns. So this is the first hidden neuron. And then the second column is the second hidden neuron. And then we multiply these by the weights of the output. So in the hand example I did, that was weight um, seven and weight eight. And then the biases three is going to be the negative 1.15 up here. Same calculations, just matrix multiplication. And then, like I mentioned before, if you did linear activation here, you'll see these are just equal to the cell on the left. 
If you wanted to do, again, like a logistic for the output activation, so something you're modeling has a value between zero and one, and you wanna force it to be there, you can do that by just doing the same calculation as above. So um, we would just do equals one divided by one plus um, the exponent of negative, and then you would do um, A, A15 here, and then it would give you a calculation, and you can just drag and drop this Again, I missed a parentheses, but yeah. So that's just simply how you do forward propagation. This is nothing that fancy. I don't want people to be scared and run from neural networks. Uh, yes, they do get more complicated. Uh, we're gonna do back propagation in the next video, which will be a little more complicated, a little bit more math. Um, but just bear with me here. We're gonna get through this and we're all gonna be experts at neural networks. So anyways, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time.